I found you. If not, I'm probably just wasting my time with this call, but uh, it's worth a try. So, uh, your name's John? John? John, I think it's John. Well, uh, my name's Peter, and I'm a former night guard of Freddy Fazbear's, and as far as I know, you've never met me, but you're just as deep in this as me. Every survivor I can find can help us to get out of here, so I'm gonna try to keep you alive, John. I can't protect you. But I might have some useful information on what to do when they wake up. And by they, I'm talking about your, uh, your childhood friends. Now before you start questioning me how you could meet them after they were killed back in the 80s, there's a pretty simple answer. You're dead, John. No, I'm not joking. I'm unsure of how you died, but I know that you definitely made a mistake by doing so. I think I should probably explain myself here, so, uh, so let me hurry up. You might have already noticed that this place probably looks familiar to you, and there's a good reason for that. This is Fred Bear's family diner. Kinda. To be exact, it's an eternal purgatory. Your memory shaped the place, so for you it probably looks like a mix of wherever you last worked or lived in Fred Bear's. On that, you're pretty lucky. You could have gotten a much worse look for this place in your head, but that's trivia you don't need to know about. What you do need to know about is that this eternal purgatory could potentially be escaped from, and that I have a plan of how to do so. However, you do need to assist me on this, and it's not quite ready. I'll explain it to you tomorrow, but for now, it's an important step for you to look onto the office table with the fan that is located next to you, and get the audio tape that is in there out of it. You will need this if you want to escape from here. However, it appears that we are really running short on time and I should really hurry to explain to you what to do against your friends. If any of your friends come to your security office, you're gonna experience them from a more, uh, hostile side. See, I currently don't know exactly what happened to them, but I know something really weird must have happened to their spirits. They're pretty messed up and broken and I don't think they're very mentally stable. See what I noticed when encountering them earlier, when I was still the only normal person here, was that upon putting their side on me, the only way to make them wander off is to hide from them. Now the only way to really hide from them in your case probably is just getting out of sight from the doors they appear in, so if you see anybody in them, run somewhere that is far away from the doors as possible. I don't think anyone's active tonight, but I could be wrong. There's this really weird daily cycle of activity in the slumber for them, so I'm going after that. I might have gotten it wrong though, so don't rely on too much on me. I think that's everything for now. I'm not entirely sure if your friends will be hostile towards you, but I can't throw the idea out. I don't think they'll be able to remember you at all, really. All they really want is... Damn it, I need to go right now or one of them's gonna find me. Stupid yellow bear suit. I'll get back to you later. Thank you. 
hoping you made it past night one. Night two is going to be a little trickier. I hope you've come prepared. Uh, let's see. Uh, where I left off. The reason these spirits want to kill you, and, and this is just a guess on my side, uh, it's because they need what's inside of you. And by this, I mean uh, the plasma your ghostly body is made of. You see, my theory on why these ghosts turn to animatronics is that someone or something made an attempt of manifesting them to physical bodies out of thin air. It sounds impossible, right? Yet, yeah, that's the thing. Whoever made the attempt failed. Most likely horribly. That's why all these characters look so weird and broken. So in order to fix themselves, they possibly need a way bigger plasma source. And I think that's where you come in. You're an unarmed adult ghost, which makes you a potential meal for them. They don't see us as humans, John. They only see us as a chance for survival. Can we really blame them for it? Why am I asking you questions? I'm leaving a message, not actually talking to you. Uh, well, moving on, I think only one character is going to become active tonight, and that is the bear character I cannot identify. I, I have no idea what exactly he is, but it appears that his manifestation was somewhat fruitful. He, he seems to be glitching in and out of existence, which is why I dubbed him Am I Real. <laughs> Clever, right? Yeah, not really, yeah. You really need to keep an eye on that guy, though, or else you're going to run into massive problems. If he's fixed and clean, you're absolutely fine. If he's broken, on the other hand, watch him for a few seconds. He should turn back to normal. If you don't keep him normal, he's going to really hurt you. Now, remember that plan I mentioned? Yeah, you do. This plan is uh, it's still a work in progress, and I don't have everything ready yet. However... I'm pretty sure that there's more audio tapes like the one you hopefully picked up from the recorder yesterday. And they are going to appear in a different camera every night. If you see it, click on it with that mouse on the old computer in your room, and you'll probably obtain it. Now, I'm leaving it up to you. Don't waste too much time listening to this. He might already be active.